So, Bendy in the Dark Revival just released. You heard me. After three years, we have the game on Steam ready to play. It's actually been out for a few days at the time of writing this, and it's been out for around a week at the time of recording this. And by the time you're watching this, it's probably been out for several weeks. But I'm not here to talk about the release dates. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm here to talk about the game and give it a full analysis. Yes, that means going back on all the points in my old video. Also, massive spoiler alert for Dark Revival and Ink Machine. These are two amazing games, and not only will you not understand the lore if you don't play them, but also they'll ruin all the surprises along the way. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Number one, Audrey. We learn a lot about Audrey in this game. We can even confirm or deny the other theory I made. We learn from Joey Drew that Audrey is actually Joey's daughter that he created from the ink. And this is not actually a character at the end of Bendy and the Ink Machine. This surprised me because up until the point where Joey reveals this to us, I was confident that this was Audrey. But now it seems to be proven wrong. She appears to be an older version of Audrey, since she calls him Uncle Joey. This note by Joey right here actually tells us quite a bit about the old versions of Audrey and how they used to call her uncle before and not dad, while Audrey was the first to actually call Joey dad. Another curious thing about Audrey is this. Listen to her theme song. Now let's listen to Another World Revealed, the song that plays when Henry pulls out the seeing eye tool in chapter 5 of Bendy and the Ink Machine and sees all the secret messages in his prison for the first time. As you can see, they're the same leitmotif or melody. Maybe this implies that Audrey is the one that wrote the secret messages? We still don't really have proof on who wrote them after all. And the main theory on who wrote them was either a past version of Henry or Andre. It could be someone like Wilson, but there are alternatives as well. So we don't really know. Number two, the Butcher Gang. This point is quite bizarre, and here's why. During the marketing for Bendy in the Dark Revival, there was so much Butcher Gang. Like, everywhere. There was... The cardboard cutouts everywhere, you'd see all the new models, the trailers were filled with them, they had like every like, well, like the secret bits were like pipers and things, and it was so cool. Even in the beginning of the game, like the first enemy we, like, one of the first enemies we encounter is a piper. And yet, in the game, like they turn up once or twice. They just, I just said that they turn up in the beginning, but other than that, there is not a single second of combat with them. They barely actually turn up. In fact, I'd argue they turn up less than in Bendy and the Ink Machine. They also have virtually no plot relevance. The only thing that makes them slightly more important is Carly, the new fourth member of the Butcher Gang that makes Edgar's name stick out like a sore thumb even more now. She just jump scared us a couple times, but again, not a single battle with her for the entire game. It genuinely seems like there's some sort of mystical, vague thing that they're keeping, and we might learn more about it later. Maybe in the third game, which I'll talk more about later, we'll learn about them. I don't know, it just seems a little bizarre. Number three. The Ink Demon. In Dark Revival, we learn that Wilson converts the Ink Demon Bendy into this cute little baby Bendy. He then tells everyone that he has killed the Ink Demon and continues to experiment with ways to get rid of him. We also learn the Ink Demon has evolved and now has a voice that it seems like he's the thread holding this fictitious ink world together. Speaking of which, the Ink Cartoon World. One of the most popular theories about Bendy and the Ink Machine stated that Henry was trapped inside a cartoon world that was simulated inside the Ink Machine and was constantly looping. Well, that seems to have been proven true, or at least parts of it. This and the fact that we see Henry imprisoned in Dark Revival seems to imply that the ending of Bendy and the Ink Machine was not a happy one. Number 5. The whole choice thing. This one is rather peculiar, again. The whole choice thing was hyped up in the trailers, but was not actually featured in the game. Bendy and the Dark Revival turned up exactly like Bendy and the Ink Machine. Nothing like I predicted it would. 
I expected it to be something more like The Happy Few, as I spoke in my old video. But no, it just ended up being like Penny and Ink Machine. I think the choice thing really was us reading too deep into the thing and just deceptive trailers. I don't know. Might be unintentional. Number six. This game is clearly a sequel. Again, a lot of hyping up about the thing that wasn't actually in the game. They said that it wasn't a sequel or a prequel, but in the end it just was a sequel. It was really just a sequel. I don't know if it was intended to be less of a sequel and more of a mix. And, like, after they stopped saying that, it ended up being, like, a more of a sequel. But I'm surprised they never said it was a sequel and a prequel. Or anything more. Because, really, it seems like it's best to think of it as a sequel. I'm surprised no one ever called it a sequel more than a prequel or anything. People just kind of said it's a sort of neither. I'm surprised no one told it it was mostly a sequel. Sure, it's kind of a prequel as well, but not really. Number 7, 414. Again, 414 was also something that was hyped up. I think the importance of 414 is meant to be the fact that Henry's little cage here is number 414. I don't know if that's all it is, or that is also there because of another reason. I don't know if it is meant to translate to the date April 14th. I don't know. But it's probably already been revealed to us what it is, just we don't, I don't, I don't quite get what it's exactly meant to be. I don't know. Number seven, Wilson. Wilson is Nathan Arch's son, who disguises himself as a lowly janitor and starts conducting experiments with the ink machine. When I first played chapter five, actually, I thought that Wilson was a looks aren't everything message. The idea that everyone would reject him because he seemed creepy, even though all he wanted to do was just help humanity. And he wanted to, like, solve world hunger, solve poverty and all that, and save his father, and that's really what he wanted to do. And he wasn't really evil, but just he looks creepy. Everyone thought he was evil and rejected him. But he just was a real kind person. But that was before he did this. It's actually a shame, since I would have really loved a message like that. Because that's someone, actually one of my favorite models. I, I really wish they would have delivered that message. But I, the story was great anyway, so... I, props to them for making a cool story. I don't really care. Number 8. A darker story. Do I need to explain this? Number 9. The Future. With the way this ended, there might actually be a third game. This time, properly exploring the Gent Corporation and whatever this thing is. My personal theory is a new modernized ink machine, but I don't know. I did not notice this until now, but the items here are all the ritual items for the ink machine. And that's about it for now. I will make more theories on the Bendyverse, but for now, I just want to say I really loved Bendy in the Dark Revival. It was amazing, it continued the story perfectly, the characters were amazing, the ending was amazing, the morals were amazing, I absolutely loved it, it was so emotional, it's one of the best games I've ever played, and I'm so excited to keep digging and see what the community does with the game. Anyway, I, I really recommend that uh, you go play it, and anyone, anyone who liked Ink Machine should go and play it, because it's so good, I absolutely loved it. A great job to Meet Lee and Mike Mood. And Kindly Beast and everyone for working on the game because that was absolutely amazing. Anyway, I will see you all in my next video, which might be a Bendy Theory. Uh, most likely a Bendy Theory. And uh, I will see you all later. Goodbye. <laughs>